Jesus Christ came from the family of King David and also from the family of Abraham. And this is a list of his ancestors. From Abraham to King David, his ancestors were Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Judah and his brothers. Judah's sons were Perez and Zerah, and their mother was Tamar, Hezron, Ram, Ammonadab, Nashon, Salmon, Boaz. His mother was Rahab, Obed. His mother was Ruth, Jesse, and King David. From David to the time of the exile in Babylonia, the ancestors of Jesus were David Solomon. His mother had been Uriah's wife, Rehoboam, Abijah, Asa, Jehoshaphat, Jehoram, Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, Hezekiah, Manasseh, Ammon, Josiah, and Jehoiakim and his brothers. From the exile to the birth of Jesus, his ancestors were Jehoiakim, Shealtiel, Zerubbabel, Abiad, Eliakim, Azor, Zadok, Achim, Eliud, Eliezer, Mathen, Jacob, and Joseph, the husband of Mary, the mother of Jesus, who is called the Messiah. There were generations from Abraham to David. There were also from David to the exile in Babylonia and more to the birth of the Messiah. This is how Jesus Christ was born. A young woman named Mary was engaged to Joseph from King David's family. But before they were married, she learned that she was going to have a baby by God's Holy Spirit. Joseph was a good man and did not want to embarrass Mary in front of everyone. So he decided to quietly call off the wedding. While Joseph was thinking about this, an angel from the Lord appeared to him in a dream. The angel said, Joseph, the baby that Mary will have is from the Holy Spirit. Go ahead and marry her. Then after her baby is born, name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. So the Lord's promise came true, just as the prophet had said, A virgin will have a baby boy, and he will be called Emmanuel, which means, God is with us. After Joseph woke up, he and Mary were soon married, just as the Lord's angel had told him to do. But they did not sleep together before her baby was born. Then Joseph named him Jesus. When Jesus was born in the village of Bethlehem in Judea, Herod was king. During this time some wise men from the east came to Jerusalem and said, Where is the child born to be king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard about this, he was worried and so was everyone else in Jerusalem. Herod brought together the chief priests and the teachers of the law of Moses and asked them, Where will the Messiah be born? They told him, He will be born in Bethlehem, just as the prophet wrote, Bethlehem in the land of Judea, you are very important among the towns of Judea. From your town will come a leader who will be like a shepherd for my people Israel. Herod secretly called in the wise men and asked them when they had first seen the star. He told them, Go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, let me know. I also want to go and worship him. The wise men listened to what the king said and then left. And the star they had seen in the east went on ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. They were thrilled and excited to see the star. When the men went into the house and saw the child with Mary, his mother, they knelt down and worshipped him. They took out their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh and gave them to him. Later they were warned in a dream not to return to Herod, and they went back home by another road. After the wise men had gone, an angel from the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up! Hurry and take the child and his mother to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you to return, because Herod is looking for the child and wants to kill him. That night, Joseph got up and took his wife and the child to Egypt, where they stayed until Herod died. So the Lord's promise came true, just as the prophet had said, I called my son out of Egypt. 
When Herod found out that the wise men from the east had tricked him, he was very angry. He gave orders for his men to kill all the boys who lived in or near Bethlehem and were two years old and younger. This was based on what he had learned from the wise men. So the Lord's promise came true, just as the prophet Jeremiah had said. In Ramah a voice was heard crying and weeping loudly. Rachel was mourning for her children, and she refused to be comforted, because they were dead. After King Herod died, an angel from the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph while he was still in Egypt. The angel said, Get up and take the child and his mother back to Israel. The people who wanted to kill him are now dead. Joseph got up and left with them for Israel. But when he heard that Herod's son Archelaus was now ruler of Judea, he was afraid to go there. Then in a dream he was told to go to Galilee, and they went to live there in the town of Nazareth. So the Lord's promise came true, just as the prophet had said, He will be called a Nazarene. Years later, John the Baptist started preaching in the desert of Judea. He said, Turn back to God. The kingdom of heaven will soon be here. John was the one the prophet Isaiah was talking about when he said, In the desert someone is shouting, Get the road ready for the Lord. Make a straight path for him. John wore clothes made of camel's hair. He had a leather strap around his waist and ate grasshoppers and wild honey. From Jerusalem and all Judea and from the Jordan River Valley crowds of people went to John. They told how sorry they were for their sins, and he baptized them in the river. Many Pharisees and Sadducees also came to be baptized. But John said to them, You bunch of snakes! Who warned you to run from the coming judgment? Do something to show you have really given up your sins. And don't start telling yourselves that you belong to Abraham's family. I tell you that God can turn these stones into children for Abraham. An axe is ready to cut the trees down at their roots. Any tree that doesn't produce good fruit will be chopped down and thrown into a fire. I baptize you with water so you will give up your sins. But someone more powerful is going to come and I am not good enough even to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His threshing fork is in his hand, and he is ready to separate the wheat from the husks. He will store the wheat in a barn and burn the husks in a fire that never goes out. Jesus left Galilee and went to the Jordan River to be baptized by John. But John kept objecting and said, I ought to be baptized by you. Why have you come to me? Jesus answered, For now this is how it should be, because we must do all God wants us to do. Then John agreed. So Jesus was baptized. And as soon as he came out of the water, the sky opened, and he saw the Spirit of God coming down on him like a dove. Then a voice from heaven said, this is my own dear Son, and I am pleased with him. The Holy Spirit led Jesus into the desert, so that the devil could test him. After Jesus had gone without eating for days and nights, he was very hungry. Then the devil came to him and said, If you are God's Son, tell these stones to turn into bread. Jesus answered, The scriptures say, No one can live only on food. People need every word that God has spoken. Next, the devil took Jesus into the holy city to the highest part of the temple. The devil said, If you are God's son, jump off. The scriptures say, God will give his angels orders about you. They will catch you in their arms, and you won't hurt your feet on the stones. Jesus answered, The scriptures also say, Don't try to test the Lord your God. Finally, the devil took Jesus up on a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms on earth and their power. The devil said to him, I will give all this to you if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus answered, Go away, Satan! 
The scriptures say, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left Jesus, and angels came to help him. When Jesus heard that John had been put in prison, he went to Galilee. But instead of staying in Nazareth, Jesus moved to Capernaum. This town was beside Lake Galilee in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali. So God's promise came true, just as the prophet Isaiah had said, Listen, lands of Zebulun and Naphtali, lands along the road to the sea and across the Jordan. Listen, Galilee, land of the Gentiles. Although your people live in darkness, they will see a bright light. Although they live in the shadow of death, a light will shine on them. Then Jesus started preaching. Turn back to God. The kingdom of heaven will soon be here. While Jesus was walking along the shore of Lake Galilee, he saw two brothers. One was Simon, also known as Peter, and the other was Andrew. They were fishermen, and they were casting their net into the lake. Jesus said to them, Follow me. I will teach you how to bring in people instead of fish. Right then the two brothers dropped their nets and went with him. Jesus walked on until he saw James and John, the sons of Zebedee. They were in a boat with their father, mending their nets. Jesus asked them to come with him. At once they left the boat and their father and went with Jesus. Jesus went all over Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the good news about God's kingdom. He also healed every kind of disease and sickness. News about him spread all over Syria, and people with every kind of sickness or disease were brought to him. Some of them had a lot of demons in them, others were thought to be crazy, and still others could not walk. But Jesus healed them all. Large crowds followed Jesus from Galilee and the region around the ten cities known as Decapolis. They also came from Jerusalem, Judea, and from across the Jordan River. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the side of a mountain and sat down. Jesus' disciples gathered around him, and he taught them, God blesses those people who depend only on him. They belong to the kingdom of heaven. God blesses those people who grieve. They will find comfort. God blesses those people who are humble. The earth will belong to them. God blesses those people who want to obey him more than to eat or drink. They will be given what they want. God blesses those people who are merciful. They will be treated with mercy. God blesses those people whose hearts are pure. They will see him. God blesses those people who make peace. They will be called his children. God blesses those people who are treated badly for doing right. They belong to the kingdom of heaven. God will bless you when people insult you, mistreat you, and tell all kinds of evil lies about you because of me. Be happy and excited. You will have a great reward in heaven. People did these same things to the prophets who lived long ago. You are the salt for everyone on earth. But if salt no longer tastes like salt, how can it make food salty? All it is good for is to be thrown out and walked on. You are the light for the whole world. A city built on top of a hill cannot be hidden, and no one lights a lamp and puts it under a clay pot. Instead, it is placed on a lampstand, where it can give light to everyone in the house. Make your light shine, so others will see the good you do and will praise your Father in heaven. Don't suppose I came to do away with the law and the prophets. I did not come to do away with them, but to give them their full meaning. Heaven and earth may disappear, but I promise you not even a period or comma will ever disappear from the law. Everything written in it must happen. If you reject even the least important command in the law and teach others to do the same, you will be the least important person in the kingdom of heaven. But if you obey and teach others its commands, you will have an important place in the kingdom.
You must obey God's commands better than the Pharisees and the teachers of the law obey them. If you don't, I promise you will never get into the kingdom of heaven. You know our ancestors were told, Do not murder, and a murderer must be brought to trial. But I promise you if you are angry with someone, you will have to stand trial. If you call someone a fool, you will be taken to court. And if you say that someone is worthless, you will be in danger of the fires of hell. So if you are about to place your gift on the altar and remember that someone is angry with you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. Make peace with that person, then come back and offer your gift to God. Before you are dragged into court, make friends with the person who has accused you of doing wrong. If you don't, you will be handed over to the judge and then to the officer who will put you in jail. I promise you will not get out until you have paid the last cent you owe. You know the commandment which says, Be faithful in marriage. But I tell you if you look at another woman and want her, you are already unfaithful in your thoughts. If your right eye causes you to sin, poke it out and throw it away. It is better to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to end up in hell. If your right hand causes you to sin, chop it off and throw it away. It is better to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. You have been taught that a man who divorces his wife must write out divorce papers for her. But I tell you not to divorce your wife unless she has committed some terrible sexual sin. If you divorce her, you will cause her to be unfaithful, just as any man who marries her is guilty of taking another man's wife. You know our ancestors were told, Don't use the Lord's name to make a promise unless you are going to keep it. But I tell you not to swear by anything when you make a promise. Heaven is God's throne so don't swear by heaven. The earth is God's footstool, so don't swear by the earth. Jerusalem is the city of the great king, so don't swear by it. Don't swear by your own head. You cannot make one hair white or black. When you make a promise, say only yes or no. Anything else comes from the devil. You know you have been taught. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you not to try to get even with a person who has done something to you. When someone slaps your right cheek, turn and let that person slap your other cheek. If someone sues you for your shirt, give up your coat as well. If a soldier forces you to carry his pack one kilometer, carry it two kilometers. When people ask you for something, give it to them. When they want to borrow money, lend it to them. Luke, you have heard people say, Love your neighbors and hate your enemies. But I tell you to love your enemies and pray for anyone who mistreats you. Then you will be acting like your Father in heaven. He makes the sun rise on both good and bad people. And he sends rain for the ones who do right and for the ones who do wrong. If you love only those people who love you, will God reward you for this? Even tax collectors love their friends. If you greet only your friends, what's so great about this? Don't even unbelievers do that? But you must always act like your Father in heaven. When you do good deeds, don't try to show off. If you do, you won't get a reward from your Father in heaven. When you give to the poor, don't blow a loud horn. That's what show-offs do in the synagogues and on the street corners, because they are always looking for praise. I can assure you that they already have their reward. When you give to the poor, don't let anyone know about it. Then your gift will be given in secret. Your Father knows what is done in secret and will reward you. When you pray, don't be like those show-offs who love to stand up and pray in the synagogues and on the street corners. They do this just to look good. I can assure you that they already have their reward. When you pray, go into a room alone and close the door. Pray to your Father in private. He knows what is done in private and will reward you. 
When you pray, don't talk on and on as people do who don't know God. They think God likes to hear long prayers. Don't be like them. Your Father knows what you need even before you ask. You should pray like this. Our Father in heaven, help us to honor your name. Come and set up your kingdom, so that everyone on earth will obey you, as you are obeyed in heaven. Give us our food for today. Forgive us for doing wrong, as we forgive others. Keep us from being tempted and protect us from evil. If you forgive others for the wrongs they do to you, your Father in heaven will forgive you. But if you don't forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sins. When you go without eating, don't try to look gloomy as those show-offs do when they go without eating. I can assure you that they already have their reward. Instead, comb your hair and wash your face. Then others won't know you are going without eating. But your Father sees what is done in private, and He will reward you. Don't store up treasures on earth. Moths and rust can destroy them, and thieves can break in and steal them. Instead, store up your treasures in heaven, where moths and rust cannot destroy them, and thieves cannot break in and steal them. Your heart will always be where your treasure is. Your eyes are a window for your body. When they are good, you have all the light you need. But when your eyes are bad, everything is dark. If the light inside you is dark, you surely are in the dark. You cannot be the slave of two masters. You will like one more than the other or be more loyal to one than the other. You cannot serve both God and money. I tell you not to worry about your life. Don't worry about having something to eat, drink, or wear. Isn't life more than food or clothing? Look at the birds in the sky. They don't plant or harvest. They don't even store grain in barns. Yet your Father in heaven takes care of them. Aren't you worth much more than birds? Can worry make you live longer? Why worry about clothes? Look how the wild flowers grow. They don't work hard to make their clothes. But I tell you that Solomon with all his wealth wasn't as well clothed as one of them. God gives such beauty to everything that grows in the fields, even though it is here today and thrown into a fire tomorrow. God will surely do even more for you. Why do you have such little faith? Don't worry and ask yourselves, Will we have anything to eat? Will we have anything to drink? Will we have any clothes to wear? Only people who don't know God are always worrying about such things. Your Father in heaven knows you need all of these. But more than anything else, put God's work first and do what He wants. Then the other things will be yours as well. Don't worry about tomorrow. It will take care of itself. You have enough to worry about today. Don't condemn others, and God won't condemn you. God will be as hard on you as you are on others. He will treat you exactly as you treat them. You can see the speck in your friend's eye, but you don't notice the log in your own eye. How can you say, My friend, let me take the speck out of your eye, when you don't see the log in your own eye? You're nothing but show-offs. First, take the log out of your own eye. Then you can see how to take the speck out of your friend's eye. Don't give to dogs what belongs to God. They will only turn and attack you. Don't throw pearls down in front of pigs. They will trample all over them. Ask, and you will receive. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open for you. Everyone who asks will receive. Everyone who searches will find, and the door will be open for everyone who knocks. Would any of you give your hungry child a stone, if the child asked for some bread? Would you give your child a snake if the child asked for a fish? As bad as you are, you still know how to give good gifts to your children. But your Heavenly Father is even more ready to give good things to people who ask. Treat others as you want them to treat you. 
This is what the law and the prophets are all about. Go in through the narrow gate. The gate to destruction is wide, and the road that leads there is easy to follow. A lot of people go through that gate. But the gate to life is very narrow. The road that leads there is so hard to follow that only a few people find it. Watch out for false prophets. They dress up like sheep, but inside they are wolves who have come to attack you. You can tell what they are by what they do. No one picks grapes or figs from thorn bushes. A good tree produces good fruit, and a bad tree produces bad fruit. A good tree cannot produce bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot produce good fruit. Every tree producing bad fruit will be chopped down and burned. You can tell who the false prophets are by their deeds. Not everyone who calls me their Lord will get into the kingdom of heaven. Only the ones who obey my Father in heaven will get in. On the day of judgment many will call me their Lord. They will say, We preached in your name, and in your name we forced out demons and worked many miracles. But I will tell them, I will have nothing to do with you. Get out of my sight, you evil people! Anyone who hears and obeys these teachings of mine is like a wise person who built a house on solid rock. Rain poured down, rivers flooded, and winds beat against that house. But it was built on solid rock, and so it did not fall. Anyone who hears my teachings and doesn't obey them is like a foolish person who built a house on sand. Rain poured down, rivers flooded, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Finally, it fell with a crash. When Jesus finished speaking, the crowds were surprised at his teaching. He taught them like someone with authority, and not like their teachers of the law of Moses. As Jesus came down the mountain, he was followed by large crowds. Suddenly a man with leprosy came and knelt in front of Jesus. He said, Lord, you have the power to make me well, if only you wanted to. Jesus put his hand on the man and said, I want to. Now you are well. At once the man's leprosy disappeared. Jesus told him, Don't tell anyone about this but go and show the priest that you are well. Then take a gift to the temple just as Moses commanded, and everyone will know that you have been healed. When Jesus was going into the town of Capernaum, an army officer came up to him and said, Lord, my servant is at home in such terrible pain that he can't even move. I will go and heal him, Jesus replied. But the officer said, Lord, I'm not good enough for you to come into my house. Just give the order, and my servant will get well. I have officers who give orders to me, and I have soldiers who take orders from me. I can say to one of them, Go, and he goes. I can say to another, Come, and he comes. I can say to my servant, Do this, and he will do it. When Jesus heard this, he was so surprised that he turned and said to the crowd following him, I tell you in all of Israel I've never found anyone with this much faith. Many people will come from everywhere to enjoy the feast in the kingdom of heaven with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But the ones who should have been in the kingdom will be thrown out into the dark. They will cry and grit their teeth in pain. Then Jesus said to the officer, you may go home now. Your faith has made it happen. Right then his servant was healed. Jesus went to the home of Peter, where he found that Peter's mother-in-law was sick in bed with fever. He took her by the hand, and the fever left her. Then she got up and served Jesus a meal. That evening many people with demons in them were brought to Jesus. And with only a word he forced out the evil spirits, and healed everyone who was sick. So God's promise came true, just as the prophet Isaiah had said, He healed our diseases and made us well. When Jesus saw the crowd, he went across Lake Galilee. A teacher of the law of Moses came up to him and said, 
Teacher, I'll go anywhere with you. Jesus replied, Foxes have dens, and birds have nests. But the Son of Man doesn't have a place to call his own. Another disciple said to Jesus, Lord, let me wait till I bury my father. Jesus answered, Follow me, and let the dead bury their dead. After Jesus left in a boat with his disciples, a terrible storm suddenly struck the lake, and waves started splashing into their boat. Jesus was sound asleep, so the disciples went over to him and woke him up. They said, Lord, wake up! Save us before we drown! But Jesus replied, Why are you so afraid? You surely don't have much faith. Then he got up and ordered the wind and the waves to calm down, and everything was calm. The men in the boat were amazed and said, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. After Jesus had crossed the lake, he came to shore near the town of Gadara and started down the road. Two men with demons in them came to him from the tombs. They were so fierce that no one could travel that way. Suddenly they shouted, Jesus, Son of God, what do you want with us? Have you come to punish us before our time? Not far from there a large herd of pigs was feeding. So the demons begged Jesus, If you force us out, please send us into those pigs. Jesus told them to go, and they went out of the men and into the pigs. All at once the pigs rushed down the steep bank into the lake and drowned. The people taking care of the pigs ran to the town and told everything, especially what had happened to the two men. Everyone in town came out to meet Jesus. When they saw him, they begged him to leave their part of the country. Jesus got into a boat and crossed back over to the town where he lived. Some people soon brought to him a man lying on a mat because he could not walk. When Jesus saw how much faith they had, he said to the man, My friend, don't worry. Your sins are forgiven. Some teachers of the law of Moses said to themselves, Jesus must think he is God. But Jesus knew what was in their minds, and he said, Why are you thinking such evil things? Is it easier for me to tell this man his sins are forgiven or to tell him to get up and walk? But I will show you that the Son of Man has the right to forgive sins here on earth. So Jesus said to the man, Get up! Pick up your mat and go on home. The man got up and went home. When the crowd saw this, they were afraid and praised God for giving such authority to people. As Jesus was leaving, he saw a tax collector named Matthew sitting at the place for paying taxes. Jesus said to him, Follow me. Matthew got up and went with him. Later, Jesus and his disciples were having dinner at Matthew's house. Many tax collectors and other sinners were also there. Some Pharisees asked Jesus' disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and other sinners? Jesus heard them and answered, Healthy people don't need a doctor, but sick people do. Go and learn what the scriptures mean when they say, Instead of offering sacrifices to me, I want you to be merciful to others. I didn't come to invite good people to be my followers. I came to invite sinners. Some followers of John the Baptist came and asked Jesus, Why do we and the Pharisees often go without eating, while your disciples never do? Jesus answered, The friends of a bridegroom aren't sad while he is still with them but the time will come when he will be taken from them. Then they will go without eating. No one uses a new piece of cloth to patch old clothes. The patch would shrink and tear a bigger hole. No one pours new wine into old wineskins. The wine would swell and burst the old skins. Then the wine would be lost, and the skins would be ruined. New wine must be put into new wineskins. Both the skins and the wine will then be safe. While Jesus was still speaking, an official came and knelt in front of him. 
the man said. My daughter has just now died. Please come and place your hand on her. Then she will live again. Jesus and his disciples got up and went with the man. A woman who had been bleeding for twelve years came up behind Jesus and barely touched his clothes. She had said to herself, If I can just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Jesus turned. He saw the woman and said, Don't worry. You are now healed because of your faith. At that moment she was healed. When Jesus went into the home of the official and saw the musicians and the crowd of mourners, he said, Get out of here. The little girl isn't dead. She is just asleep. Everyone started laughing at Jesus. But after the crowd had been sent out of the house, Jesus went to the girl's bedside. He took her by the hand and helped her up. News about this spread all over that part of the country. As Jesus was leaving that place, two blind men began following him and shouting, Son of David, have pity on us! After Jesus had gone indoors, the two blind men came up to him. He asked them, Do you believe I can make you well? Yes, Lord, they answered. Jesus touched their eyes and said, Because of your faith, you will be healed. They were able to see, and Jesus strictly warned them not to tell anyone about him. But they left and talked about him to everyone in that part of the country. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, some people brought to him a man who could not talk because a demon was in him. After Jesus had forced the demon out, the man started talking. The crowds were so amazed they began saying, Nothing like this has ever happened in Israel. But the Pharisees said, The leader of the demons gives him the power to force out demons. Jesus went to every town and village. He taught in their synagogues and preached the good news about God's kingdom. Jesus also healed every kind of disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he felt sorry for them. They were confused and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. He said to his disciples, A large crop is in the fields, but there are only a few workers. Ask the Lord in charge of the harvest to send out workers to bring it in. Jesus called together his twelve disciples. He gave them the power to force out evil spirits and to heal every kind of disease and sickness. The first of the twelve apostles was Simon, better known as Peter. His brother Andrew was an apostle, and so were James and John, the two sons of Zebedee. Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, Matthew the tax collector, James the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus were also apostles. The others were Simon, known as the Eager One, and Judas Iscariot, who later betrayed Jesus. Mark Dash Luke Jesus sent out the twelve apostles with these instructions, Stay away from the Gentiles and don't go to any Samaritan town. Go only to the people of Israel, because they are like a flock of lost sheep. As you go, announce that the kingdom of heaven will soon be here. Heal the sick, raise the dead to life, heal people who have leprosy, and force out demons. You received without paying, now give without being paid. Don't take along any gold, silver, or copper coins. And don't carry a traveling bag or an extra shirt or sandals or a walking stick. Workers deserve their food. So when you go to a town or a village, find someone able and willing to have you as their guest and stay with them until you leave. When you go to a home, give it your blessing of peace. If the home is deserving, let your blessing remain with them. But if the home doesn't accept you, take back your blessing of peace. If someone won't welcome you or listen to your message, leave their home or town and shake the dust from your feet at them. I promise you the day of judgment will be easier for the towns of Sodom and Gomorrah than for that town. I am sending you like lambs into a pack of wolves. So be as wise as snakes and as innocent as doves. 
Watch out for people who will take you to court and have you beaten in their synagogues. Because of me, you will be dragged before rulers and kings to tell them and the Gentiles about your faith. But when someone arrests you, don't worry about what you will say or how you will say it. At that time you will be given the words to say. But you will not really be the one speaking. The Spirit from your Father will tell you what to say. Brothers and sisters will betray one another and have each other put to death. Parents will betray their own children, and children will turn against their parents and have them killed. Everyone will hate you because of me. But if you remain faithful until the end, you will be saved. When people mistreat you in one town, hurry to another one. I promise you before you have gone to all the towns of Israel, the Son of Man will come. Students are not better than their teacher, and slaves are not better than their master. It is enough for students to be like their teacher, and for slaves to be like their master. If people call the head of the family Satan, what will they say about the rest of the family? Don't be afraid of anyone. Everything is hidden will be found out, and every secret will be known. Whatever I say to you in the dark, you must tell in the light. And you must announce from the house stops whatever I have whispered to you. Don't be afraid of people. They can kill you, but they cannot harm your soul. Instead, you should fear God who can destroy both your body and your soul in hell. Aren't two sparrows sold for only a penny? But your father knows when any one of them falls to the ground. Even the hairs on your head are counted. So don't be afraid. You are worth much more than many sparrows. If you tell others you belong to me, I will tell my father in heaven you are my followers. But if you reject me, I will tell my Father in heaven you don't belong to me. Don't think I came to bring peace to the earth. I came to bring trouble, not peace. I came to turn sons against their fathers, daughters against their mothers, and daughters-in-law against their mothers-in-law. Your worst enemies will be in your own family. If you love your father or mother or even your sons and daughters more than me, you are not fit to be my disciples. And unless you are willing to take up your cross and follow me, you are not fit to be my disciples. If you try to save your life, you will lose it. But if you give it up for me, you will surely find it. Anyone who welcomes you welcomes me. And anyone who welcomes me also welcomes the one who sent me. Anyone who welcomes a prophet, just because that person is a prophet, will be given the same reward as a prophet. Anyone who welcomes a good person, just because that person is good, will be given the same reward as a good person. And anyone who gives one of my most humble followers a cup of cool water, just because that person is my follower, will be rewarded. After Jesus had finished instructing his twelve disciples, he left and began teaching and preaching in the towns. John was in prison when he heard what Christ was doing. So John sent some of his followers to ask Jesus, Are you the one we should be looking for? Or must we wait for someone else? Jesus answered, Go and tell John what you have heard and seen. The blind are now able to see, and the lame can walk. People with leprosy are being healed, and the deaf can hear. The dead are raised to life, and the poor are hearing the good news. God will bless everyone who doesn't reject me because of what I do. As John's followers were going away, Jesus spoke to the crowds about John. What sort of person did you go out into the desert to see? Was he like tall grass blown about by the wind? What kind of man did you go out to see? Was he someone dressed in fine clothes? People who dress like that live in the king's palace. What did you really go out to see? Was he a prophet? He certainly was. I tell you that he was more than a prophet. In the scriptures God says about him, I am sending my messenger ahead to get things ready for you. 
I tell you no one ever born on this earth is greater than John the Baptist. But whoever is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than John. From the time of John the Baptist until now, violent people have been trying to take over the kingdom of heaven by force. All the books of the prophets and the law of Moses told what was going to happen up to the time of John. And if you believe them, John is Elijah, the prophet you are waiting for. If you have ears, pay attention. You people are like children sitting in the market and shouting to each other. We played the flute, but you would not dance. We sang a funeral song, but you would not mourn. John the Baptist did not go around eating and drinking, and you said, That man has a demon in him. But the Son of Man goes around eating and drinking, and you say, That man eats and drinks too much. He is even a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is shown to be right by what it does. In the towns where Jesus had worked most of his miracles, the people refused to turn to God. So Jesus was upset with them and said, You people of Chorazin are in for trouble. You people of Bethsaida are in for trouble too. If the miracles that took place here had happened in Tyre and Sidon, the people there would have turned to God long ago. They would have dressed in sackcloth and put ashes on their heads. I tell you on the day of judgment the people of Tyre and Sidon will get off easier than you will. People of Capernaum, do you think you will be honored in heaven? You will go down to hell. If the miracles that took place in your town had happened in Sodom, it would still be standing. So I tell you on the day of judgment the people of Sodom will get off easier than you. At that moment Jesus said, My Father, Lord of heaven and earth, I am grateful that you hid all this from wise and educated people and showed it to ordinary people. Yes, Father, this is what pleased you. My Father has given me everything, and he is the only one who knows the Son. The only one who truly knows the Father is the Son. But the Son wants to tell others about the Father, so they can know him too. If you are tired from carrying heavy burdens, come to me and I will give you rest. Take the yoke I give you. Put it on your shoulders and learn from me. I am gentle and humble, and you will find rest. This yoke is easy to bear, and this burden is light. One Sabbath, Jesus and his disciples were walking through some wheat fields. His disciples were hungry and began picking and eating grains of wheat. Some Pharisees noticed this and said to Jesus, Why are your disciples picking grain on the Sabbath? They are not supposed to do this. Jesus answered, You surely must have read what David did when he and his followers were hungry. He went into the house of God, and then they ate the sacred loaves of bread that only priests are supposed to eat. Haven't you read in the law of Moses that the priests are allowed to work in the temple on the Sabbath? But no one says they are guilty of breaking the law of the Sabbath. I tell you there is something here greater than the temple. Don't you know what the scriptures mean when they say, Instead of offering sacrifices to me, I want you to be merciful to others? If you knew what this means, you would not condemn these innocent disciples of mine. So the Son of Man is Lord over the Sabbath. Jesus left and went into one of their synagogues, where there was a man whose hand was paralyzed. Some Pharisees wanted to accuse Jesus of doing something wrong, so they asked him, Is it right to heal someone on the Sabbath? Jesus answered, If one of your sheep fell into a ditch on the Sabbath, wouldn't you lift it out? People are worth much more than sheep and so it is right to do good on the Sabbath. Then Jesus told the man, Hold out your hand. The man did, and it became as healthy as the other one. The Pharisees left and started making plans to kill Jesus. When Jesus found out what was happening, he left there and large crowds followed him. He healed all of their sick, but warned them not to tell anyone about him. 
So God's promise came true, just as Isaiah the prophet had said, Here is my chosen servant. I love him, and he pleases me. I will give him my spirit, and he will bring justice to the nations. He won't shout or yell or call out in the streets. He won't break off a bent reed or put out a dying flame, but he will make sure that justice is done. All nations will place their hope in him. Some people brought to Jesus a man who was blind and could not talk because he had a demon in him. Jesus healed the man, and then he was able to talk and see. The crowds were so amazed they asked, Could Jesus be the son of David? When the Pharisees heard this, they said, He forces out demons by the power of Beelzebul, the ruler of the demons. Jesus knew what they were thinking, so he said to them, Any kingdom where people fight each other will end up ruined, and a town or family that fights will soon destroy itself. So if Satan fights against himself, how can his kingdom last? If I use the power of Beelzebul to force out demons, Whose power do your own followers use to force them out? Your followers are the ones who will judge you. But when I force out demons by the power of God's Spirit, it proves that God's kingdom has already come to you. How can anyone break into a strong man's house and steal his things, unless he first ties up the strong man? Then he can take everything. If you are not on my side, you are against me. If you don't gather in the harvest with me, you scatter it. I tell you any sinful thing you do or say can be forgiven. Even if you speak against the Son of Man, you can be forgiven. But if you speak against the Holy Spirit, you can never be forgiven, either in this life or in the life to come. A good tree produces good fruit, and a bad tree produces bad fruit. You can tell what a tree is like by the fruit it produces. You are a bunch of evil snakes, so how can you say anything good? Your words show what is in your hearts. Good people bring good things out of their hearts, but evil people bring evil things out of their hearts. I promise you on the day of judgment, everyone will have to account for every careless word they have spoken. On that day they will be told they are either innocent or guilty because of the things they have said. Some Pharisees and teachers of the Law of Moses said, Teacher, we want you to show us a sign from heaven. But Jesus replied, You want a sign because you are evil and won't believe. But the only sign you will get is the sign of the prophet Jonah. He was in the stomach of a big fish for three days and nights just as the Son of Man will be deep in the earth for three days and nights. On the day of judgment the people of Nineveh will stand there with you and condemn you. They turn to God when Jonah preach, and yet here is something far greater than Jonah. The Queen of the South will also stand there with you and condemn you. She traveled a long way to hear Solomon's wisdom, and yet here is something much greater than Solomon. When an evil spirit leaves a person, it travels through the desert, looking for a place to rest. But when the demon doesn't find a place, it says, I will go back to the home I left. When it gets there and finds the place empty, clean, and neat, it goes off and finds seven other evil spirits even worse than itself. They all come and make their home there, and the person ends up in worse shape than before. That's how it will be with you evil people of today. While Jesus was still speaking to the crowds, his mother and brothers came and stood outside because they wanted to talk with him. Someone told Jesus, Your mother and brothers are standing outside and want to talk with you. Jesus answered, Who is my mother and who are my brothers? Then he pointed to his disciples and said, these are my mother and my brothers. Anyone who obeys my Father in heaven is my brother or sister or mother. That same day Jesus left the house and went out beside Lake Galilee, where he sat down to teach. Such large crowds gathered around him that he had to sit in a boat, while the people stood on the shore. 
Then he taught them many things by using stories. He said, A farmer went out to scatter seed in a field. While the farmer was scattering the seed, some of it fell along the road and was eaten by birds. Other seeds fell on thin, rocky ground and quickly started growing because the soil wasn't very deep. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and dried up because they did not have deep roots. Some other seeds fell where thorn bushes grew up and choked the plants. But a few seeds did fall on good ground where the plants produced or or times as much as was scattered. If you have ears, pay attention. Jesus' disciples came to him and asked, Why do you use stories to speak to the people? Jesus answered, I have explained the secrets about the kingdom of heaven to you, but not to others. Everyone who has something will be given more. But people who don't have anything will lose even what little they have. I use stories when I speak to them because when they look, they cannot see, and when they listen, they cannot hear or understand. So God's promise came true, just as the prophet Isaiah had said, These people will listen and listen, but never understand. They will look and look, but never see. All of them have stubborn minds. They refuse to listen, they cover their eyes. They cannot see or hear or understand. If they could, they would turn to me, and I would heal them. But God has blessed you, because your eyes can see and your ears can hear. Many prophets and good people were eager to see what you see and to hear what you hear. But I tell you they did not see or hear. Now listen to the meaning of the story about the farmer. The seeds that fell along the road are the people who hear the message about the kingdom, but don't understand it. Then the evil one comes and snatches the message from their hearts. The seeds that fell on rocky ground are the people who gladly hear the message and accept it at once. But they don't have deep roots, and they don't last very long. As soon as life gets hard or the message gets them in trouble, they give up. The seeds that fell among the thorn bushes are also people who hear the message. But they start worrying about the needs of this life and are fooled by the desire to get rich. So the message gets choked out, and they never produce anything. The seeds that fell on good ground are the people who hear and understand the message. They produce as much as or or times what was planted. Jesus then told them this story. The kingdom of heaven is like what happened when a farmer scattered good seed in a field. But while everyone was sleeping, an enemy came and scattered weed seeds in the field and then left. When the plants came up and began to mature, the farmer's servants could see the weeds. The servants came and asked, Sir, didn't you scatter good seed in your field? Where did these weeds come from? An enemy did this. He replied. His servants then asked, Do you want us to go out and pull up the weeds? No, he answered. You might also pull up the wheat. Leave the weeds alone until harvest time. Then I'll tell my workers to gather the weeds and tie them up and burn them. But I'll order them to store the wheat in my barn. Jesus told them another story. The kingdom of heaven is like what happens when a farmer plants a mustard seed in a field. Although it is the smallest of all seeds, it grows larger than any garden plant and becomes a tree. Birds even come and nest on its branches. Jesus also said the kingdom of heaven is like what happens when a woman mixes a little yeast into three big batches of flour. Finally, all the dough rises. Jesus used stories when he spoke to the people. In fact, he did not tell them anything without using stories. So God's promise came true, just as the prophet had said, I will use stories to speak my message and to explain things hidden since the creation of the world. After Jesus left the crowd and went inside, his disciples came to him and said, Explain to us the story about the weeds in the wheat field. Jesus answered, The one who scattered the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, 
and the good seeds are the people who belong to the kingdom. The weeds are those who belong to the evil one, and the one who scattered them is the devil. The harvest is the end of time, and angels are the ones who bring in the harvest. Weeds are gathered and burned. That's how it will be at the end of time. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather from his kingdom everyone who does wrong or causes others to sin. Then he will throw them into a flaming furnace, where people will cry and grit their teeth in pain. But everyone who has done right will shine like the sun in their Father's kingdom. If you have ears, pay attention. The kingdom of heaven is like what happens when someone finds a treasure hidden in a field and buries it again. Such a person is happy and goes and sells everything in order to buy that field. The kingdom of heaven is like what happens when a shop owner is looking for fine pearls. After finding a very valuable one, the owner goes and sells everything in order to buy that pearl. The kingdom of heaven is like what happens when a net is thrown into a lake and catches all kinds of fish. When the net is full, it is dragged to the shore, and the fishermen sit down to separate the fish. They keep the good ones, but throw the bad ones away. That's how it will be at the end of time. Angels will come and separate the evil people from the ones who have done right. Then those evil people will be thrown into a flaming furnace, where they will cry and grit their teeth in pain. Jesus asked his disciples if they understood all these things. They said, Yes, we do. So he told them, Every student of the scriptures who becomes a disciple in the kingdom of heaven is like someone who brings out new and old treasures from the storeroom. When Jesus had finished telling these stories, he left and went to his hometown. He taught in their synagogue, and the people were so amazed that they asked, Where does he get all this wisdom and the power to work these miracles? Isn't he the son of the carpenter? Isn't Mary his mother? And aren't James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas his brothers? Don't his sisters still live here in our town? How can he do all this? So the people were upset because of what he was doing. But Jesus said, Prophets are honored by everyone, except the people of their hometown and their own family. And because the people did not have any faith, Jesus did not work many miracles there. About this time Herod the ruler heard the news about Jesus and told his officials, This is John the Baptist. He has come back from death, and that's why he has the power to work these miracles. Herod had earlier arrested John and had him chained and put in prison. He did this because John had told him, It isn't right for you to take Herodias, the wife of your brother Philip, Herod wanted to kill John. But the people thought John was a prophet, and Herod was afraid of what they might do. When Herod's birthday came, the daughter of Herodias danced for the guests. She pleased Herod so much he swore to give her whatever she wanted. But the girl's mother told her to say, Here on a serving plate I want the head of John the Baptist. Herod was sorry for what he had said, but he did not want to break the promise he had made in front of his guests. So he ordered a guard to go to the prison and cut off John's head. It was taken on a serving plate to the girl, and she gave it to her mother. John's followers took his body and buried it. Then they told Jesus what had happened. After Jesus heard about John, he crossed Lake Galilee to go to some place where he could be alone. But the crowds found out and followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus got out of the boat, he saw the large crowd. He felt sorry for them and healed everyone who was sick. That evening the disciples came to Jesus and said, This place is like a desert, and it's already late. Let the crowds leave, so they can go to the villages and buy some food. Jesus replied, They don't have to leave. Why don't you give them something to eat? But they said, We have only five small loaves of bread and two fish. 
Jesus asked his disciples to bring the food to him, and he told the crowd to sit down on the grass. Jesus took the five loaves and the two fish. He looked up toward heaven and blessed the food. Then he broke the bread and handed it to his disciples, and they gave it to the people. After everyone had eaten all they wanted, Jesus' disciples picked up twelve large baskets of leftovers. There were about men who ate, not counting the women and children. At once, Jesus made his disciples get into a boat and start back across the lake. But he stayed until he had sent the crowds away. Then he went up on a mountain where he could be alone and pray. Later in the evening, he was still there. By this time the boat was a long way from the shore. It was going against the wind and was being tossed around by the waves. A little while before morning, Jesus came walking on the water toward his disciples. When they saw him, they thought he was a ghost. They were terrified and started screaming. At once, Jesus said to them, Don't worry! I am Jesus. Don't be afraid. Peter replied, Lord, if it really is you, tell me to come to you on the water. Come on! Jesus said. Peter then got out of the boat and started walking on the water toward him. But when Peter saw how strong the wind was, he was afraid and started sinking. Save me, Lord! he shouted. At once, Jesus reached out his hand. He helped Peter up and said, You surely don't have much faith. Why do you doubt? When Jesus and Peter got into the boat, the wind died down. The men in the boat worshipped Jesus and said, You really are the Son of God. Jesus and his disciples crossed the lake and came to shore near the town of Genesaret. The people found out he was there, and they sent word to everyone who lived in this part of the country. So they brought all the sick people to Jesus. They begged him just to let them touch his clothes, and everyone who did was healed. About this time some Pharisees and teachers of the law of Moses came from Jerusalem. They asked Jesus, Why don't your disciples obey what our ancestors taught us to do? They don't even wash their hands before they eat. Jesus answered, Why do you disobey God and follow your own teaching? Didn't God command you to respect your father and mother? Didn't he tell you to put to death all who curse their parents? But you let people get by without helping their parents when they should. You let them say that what they have has been offered to God. Is this any way to show respect to your parents? You ignore God's commands in order to follow your own teaching. And you are nothing but show-offs. Isaiah the prophet was right when he wrote that God had said, All of you praise me with your words, but you never really think about me. It is useless for you to worship me when you teach rules made up by humans. Jesus called the crowd together and said, Pay attention and try to understand what I mean. The food you put into your mouth doesn't make you unclean and unfit to worship God. The bad words that come out of your mouth are what make you unclean. Then his disciples came over to him and asked, Do you know you insulted the Pharisees by what you said? Jesus answered, Every plant that my Father in heaven did not plant will be pulled up by the roots. Stay away from those Pharisees. They are like blind people leading other blind people, and all of them will fall into a ditch. Peter replied, What did you mean when you talked about the things that make people unclean? Jesus then said, Don't any of you know by now what I am talking about? Don't you know that the food you put into your mouth goes into your stomach and then out of your body? But the words that come out of your mouth come from your heart and they are what make you unfit to worship God. Out of your heart come evil thoughts, murder, unfaithfulness in marriage, vulgar deeds, stealing, telling lies, and insulting others. These are what make you unclean. Eating without washing your hands will not make you unfit to worship God. 
Jesus left and went to the territory near the towns of Tyre and Sidon. Suddenly a Canaanite woman from there came out shouting, Lord and son of David, have pity on me. My daughter is full of demons. Jesus did not say a word. But the woman kept following along and shouting, so his disciples came up and asked him to send her away. Jesus said, I was sent only to the people of Israel. They are like a flock of lost sheep. The woman came closer. Then she knelt down and begged, Please help me, Lord. Jesus replied, It isn't right to take food away from children and feed it to dogs. Lord, this is true, the woman said, but even puppies get the crumbs that fall from their owner's table. Jesus answered, Dear woman, you really do have a lot of faith, and you will be given what you want. At that moment her daughter was healed. From there, Jesus went along Lake Galilee. Then he climbed a hill and sat down. Large crowds came and brought many people who were paralyzed or blind or lame or unable to talk. They placed them, and many others, in front of Jesus, and he healed them all. Everyone was amazed at what they saw and heard. People who had never spoken could now speak. The lame were healed, the paralyzed could walk, and the blind were able to see. Everyone was praising the God of Israel. Jesus called his disciples together and told them, I feel sorry for these people. They have been with me for three days, and they don't have anything to eat. I don't want to send them away hungry. They might faint on their way home. His disciples said, This place is like a desert. Where can we find enough food to feed such a crowd? Jesus asked them how much food they had. They replied, Seven small loaves of bread and a few little fish. After Jesus had told the people to sit down, he took the seven loaves of bread and the fish and gave thanks. He then broke them and handed them to his disciples, who passed them around to the crowds. Everyone ate all they wanted, and the leftovers filled seven large baskets. There were men who ate, not counting the women and children. After Jesus had sent the crowds away, he got into a boat and sailed across the lake. He came to shore near the town of Magadan. The Pharisees and Sadducees came to Jesus and tried to test him by asking for a sign from heaven. He told them, If the sky is red in the evening, you say the weather will be good. But if the sky is red and gloomy in the morning, you say it is going to rain. You can tell what the weather will be like by looking at the sky. But you don't understand what is happening now. You want a sign because you are evil and won't believe. But the only sign you will be given is what happened to Jonah. Then Jesus left. The disciples had forgotten to bring any bread when they crossed the lake. Jesus then warned them, Watch out! Guard against the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees. The disciples talked this over and said to each other, He must be saying this because we didn't bring along any bread. Jesus knew what they were thinking and said, You surely don't have much faith. Why are you talking about not having any bread? Don't you understand? Have you forgotten about the people and all those baskets of leftovers from just five loaves of bread? And what about the people and all those baskets of leftovers from only seven loaves of bread? Don't you know by now that I am not talking to you about bread? Watch out for the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Finally, the disciples understood that Jesus wasn't talking about the yeast used to make bread, but about the teaching of the Pharisees and Sadducees. When Jesus and his disciples were near the town of Caesarea Philippi, he asked them, What do people say about the Son of Man? The disciples answered, Some people say you are John the Baptist, or maybe Elijah or Jeremiah or some other prophet. Then Jesus asked, But who do you say I am? Simon Peter spoke up, You are the Messiah, 
the Son of the living God. Jesus told him, Simon, son of Jonah, you are blessed. You didn't discover this on your own. It was shown to you by my Father in heaven. So I will call you Peter, which means, a rock. On this rock I will build my church, and death itself will not have any power over it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and God in heaven will allow whatever you allow on earth. But he will not allow anything you don't allow. Jesus told his disciples not to tell anyone he was the Messiah. From then on, Jesus began telling his disciples what would happen to him. He said, I must go to Jerusalem. There the nation's leaders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law of Moses will make me suffer terribly. I will be killed, but three days later I will rise to life. Peter took Jesus aside and told him to stop talking like that. He said, God would never let this happen to you, Lord. Jesus turned to Peter and said, Satan, get away from me. You're in my way because you think like everyone else and not like God. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If any of you want to be my followers, you must forget about yourself. You must take up your cross and follow me. If you want to save your life, you will destroy it. But if you give up your life for me, you will find it. What will you gain if you own the whole world but destroy yourself? What would you give to get back your soul? The Son of Man will soon come in the glory of his Father and with his angels to reward.